question I get a lot in the comments is, do I have to wait until pedestrians reach the sidewalk before starting to turn? Well, that depends on a few things. And those are mainly whether you're turning left or right, if they're coming towards you or going away from you, how fast are they coming or going, and how close to you they are. If they're coming towards you and they're relatively close, wait until they reach the sidewalk before you start turning. And what exactly is relatively close? Well, that will depend on the situation, and it's what we'll see throughout this video. If the light has a countdown, in most cases, that'll determine if you have enough time to enter the intersection. In this case, there's still plenty of time for them to cross the street so I can enter. If you see that you don't have enough time, then stop at the stop line and wait for the next green light. If the pedestrian is going away from you, it depends. For example, on a street as wide as this one, it will make absolutely no sense to wait until they reach the sidewalk on the other side to go. So as soon as I get a normal green light that allows me to turn, I go. If they're going away from you, as soon as they're, let's say, one and a half to two lanes away, you can go. Imagine, for example, in a slippery situation like here, if the pedestrian falls, you'd need to have a safe distance of more or less twice their height from them, which is more or less the equivalent of the width of one and a half to two lanes. But if the street is narrower, like a one-way street, for example, if they're coming towards you, even if they're on the other side, wait. On a wide street like this with a median, three lanes on each side, as soon as they've reached the median, wait for them to cross. If they're still on the other side of the median, when you have the opportunity to turn though, you can go. A median kind of separates a street into two different streets in terms of traffic rules in certain situations. That's the reason why if you're facing a school bus that has its red lights activated on a two-way street separated by a yellow line, you have to stop. But if the street is separated by a median, you don't need to. And it's also the reason why sometimes you have streets with a speed limit of 30 km per hour on one side, because there's a park on that side, for example, and on the other side of the median, the limit is 50, because it's a residential side. If you're turning left on a street separated by a median, and they're coming towards your direction, then wait until they reach the median to start turning. But you can start advancing a bit while waiting. If the pedestrian is on the side going towards that direction, and you know that you have enough time to turn, you can go. But if they're about to reach the median, then you have to give them priority. Remember that you're supposed to turn into the first lane. So you'll need to judge that before advancing into the intersection. And also remember that when turning left at a green light, if there's already a vehicle in the intersection, wait at the stop line until the vehicle clears the intersection before entering it. If you're turning left on a narrower street, like a one-way street, and they're coming towards you, and there are cars parked in the left lane of the street you're turning into, as soon as the pedestrians reach the parked vehicles, you can start turning. Because since there are cars parked there, you won't use that space. You'll turn into the second lane. In this case, the parked vehicles are like the equivalent of the sidewalk. If there are no vehicles parked there, however, then wait until they reach the sidewalk, since you have to turn into the first lane. If they're going away from you, you can start turning a bit before they reach the sidewalk. In this case, that distance of about one and a half to two lanes. The same applies to when you're turning right. Something that will also determine the distance at which you can start turning to either side is at what speed they're approaching. If somebody's walking fast or running, the faster they're going, the further from them you'll have to stop and wait. As for distances from the sides, you should always keep at least one meter or three feet from a vulnerable user, but that's a bare minimum. If you can keep more, you should. That also depends at what speed you're going. The faster you're going, the more distance you should keep. Sometimes students see pedestrians walking on the street like this, and their reaction is, why aren't they walking on the sidewalk? Well, because there isn't one in some cases. So if that's the case, always keep a safe distance, even if you need to cross the yellow line, as long as you do it safely, of course. In situations like these, pedestrians should be walking in the opposite direction of traffic. Again, be especially careful to leave enough distance in slippery situations in case they fall. And even when there is a sidewalk, sometimes people won't use it, even if by law they should. So whenever you're not sure if you have enough room to pass a vulnerable user safely, just stay behind them until you have the opportunity to do so. 
If you're passing next to kids, be extra careful, because they're obviously not as aware of the danger as adults. So here I slow down when passing next to them, keeping an eye on them, and I'm ready to break if needed. Especially in cases like this one, where the kid is distracted by the dog. If the dog suddenly starts running into the street, the kid might follow. If you're going straight and there's someone crossing the street in front of you, then you should respect the same distance of more or less one and a half to two lanes from them before you go, which in this case, it's when he's almost on the sidewalk. If you're at the exam, don't start moving right away when they're about here, like a lot of people do. That could fail you. If he was going that way, you could start going when he'd be about here, in the middle of this lane, because he'd be going away from you. So basically, if the pedestrians are coming towards us, we always leave a little more distance than when they are going away from us. And something I do, and I recommend you do too, is to keep a bit more distance when approaching some pedestrians, especially kids, like here. It's more reassuring for the pedestrians. But remember that in a case like this one, you still need to come to a complete stop at the stop line. Now this will seem like an obvious one, but sometimes students don't react at all when pedestrians or any other vulnerable users are not respecting priorities. Their reaction often is, yeah, but I have priority. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. If you're in one of those situations, don't forget that you're in a vehicle that weighs about 3,000 pounds or more, so a vulnerable user has absolutely no chance against you. So forget about priorities in situations like these. Just do whatever is safest for both of you. And at the exam, situations like these do happen. And people sometimes fail for not reacting at all or not reacting quickly enough. If you don't react to a dangerous situation, it doesn't matter whether it's your priority or not, you'll most probably fail. Bottom line, always use your judgment and keep a safe distance from other road users, especially vulnerable ones, whether you have priority or not. Next video, how to deal with emergency vehicles. So stay tuned and see you soon.